In this last video, I want to make two design improvements for our app, along with concept review for what we've built, plus ideas for extensions. The first design improvement I was thinking is to update the color scheme of our app to make it look more like Instagram. This is something that you can play around with and be creative. What I usually do is I go to color.adobe.com and I can play around with the color palettes here. So you can kind of drag these around, pick a different scheme, and then try and see something that looks similar to Instagram in your opinion, or you can pick whatever you like. So based on that, go to colors.xml. And what I'm copying over as the color primary, I'm picking this color, which is this dark blue. And then for the color accent, I'm updating it to be this red color. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see the color primary that we picked is what's used for the action bar at the top. And then the color accent is used for the background color of the floating action button. This is a really low effort way to improve the design, but of course there's a lot more that you could do such as changing the background color, adding Instagram assets and so on if you wanted to really match the design of Instagram. The second design improvement I'd like to do is add a profile picture next to each person's username. One way to do this is to actually allow the user to upload a profile picture and have that be associated with their profile. And that's probably what you should do if you're building out a real app. However, what I wanna show you here is essentially a hack where we take in the username and translate that into a unique image URL that can identify that user. We could put this in the data classes that we've defined, but for the sake of expediency, I'm gonna add the logic in the posts adapter. We'll create a private function here called get profile image URL. This will take in the username string, which is unique, across all users, and it returns to us the image URL. The image URL is going to be from a service called Gravatar, which stands for Globally Recognized Avatar. We'll create a Gravatar image based on the hashed value of the username. I'm gonna copy over some code, which I took from a code path guide, which I'll leave a link for in the description. What's happening here is we are taking the MD5 hash of the username, converting that into a hexadecimal value, and using that in our Gravatar image URL. Now that we can generate the image URL, we need a place to display it. So in order to do that, we need to open up item post.xml and create an image view next to the username where this can be shown. We're going to wrap the TV username text view inside of a linear layout. And this linear layout will contain the profile picture and to the right of the profile picture will be the username. So we'll have width of match parent, height of wrap content. This is going to be a horizontal linear layout because we want the profile picture and username to be horizontally next to each other. Let's hard code the width and height of the profile picture image view to be 35 dp. So it'll be a square image and we'll set the ID to be IV profile image. We can see what this looks like in the design tab. So we have allocated some space here for the image view. And why don't we put a margin to the left side of the username. Margin left, we'll make this 8 dp. Now going back into posts adapter, we can say glide dot width in the context and then load the get profile image URL. So I'm going to save the username in a separate variable. And we want to put this into that image view that we just defined. And because username might be null, we need to cast it as a non-null string. Let's try it. So now hopefully we should see an image view to the left of each username, which uniquely identifies that user. Great, so you can see that we have these two unique image URLs for Nathan and Rahul, and these should be repeated for every post that the user has made. So Nathan's profile pic shouldn't change, otherwise it wouldn't really be a good profile picture. This looks great. We have the ability to render all these posts along with uh, automatic generated profile picture. Now let's talk about the core concepts we covered along with some ideas to really improve this app. I want to return to this diagram, which shows the data structure for our application. We have two entities or two collections in Firestore, posts and users, and each collection has multiple documents. And the key thing in terms of how we structured our data is that each post 
will also contain some information about the user or the author who made that post. And this is really important because Firestore is a NoSQL database. And so we need to have some amount of data repetition in order to make queries fast. So the main concepts we talked about were how to use Firebase to power our application. So we used Firebase for sign-in, we used Firebase storage to store our photos, and we used Firestore as the database where we store all of the user and post attributes. The slide just before this is what we talked about for the data structure and how we embed user information in the post. We used tasks to handle asynchronous operations. And the idea here is that oftentimes, such as when you're creating a new post, you have multiple asynchronous operations and you need to take action based on the result of the first asynchronous operation. And so you need to chain these things together. And finally, purely from the Android perspective, we implemented a recycler view along with, we used both implicit and explicit intents in order to allow the user the functionality they need in this application. The first extension that we can do is allowing the user to sign up. Right now, we created these two fake users, Rahul and Nathan, in the Firebase console. But if you're downloading the app from the Play Store, we need to have a way for users to sign up and create a brand new user. Second, we can allow full CRUD functionality. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And if you think back to what we built, we have allowed the user to create a new post and also read new posts, basically query and retrieve posts. But there's no way for a user to modify properties on a post. So there's no update functionality and there's no way to delete a post. So implementing the full CRUD functionality would make your app a lot more mature. Next, you could use something called cloud functions to update the data in the post when a user changes the information. So right now, when I change my username, all my associated posts would essentially be stranded because the embedded user information on those posts wouldn't be updated to reflect the new username that I have. Instead, we can use cloud functions to go through all the posts that a user has ever made and update all the data inside of them to keep the data in sync. Finally, there's a lot of work that we could do around better error handling and design. There's always a lot more you can add in any app, but we also achieved a lot while building Instafire. I hope you enjoyed this series, and now you feel confident to embed Firebase in whatever app you're building. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you later. Bye.